From the rising of the sun down of the same the name of the lord is to be praised from the rising of the sun unto the going down of the same the name of the lord is to be praised praise ye the lord from the rising, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Oh, yes. We will start off our day, won't we? <clears throat> Thanking him for life. Just life. We could get up this morning. So it is a wonderful thing. And we will pray for a very good, solid connection that's not interrupted. And um, today I'm going to check out some other, another media that we could move to <clears throat> and uh, be one more of the mass exodus from Facebook. Watch Mr. Zucker. You made all your money and you don't treat us very well. So on this November 15th, y'all, which happens to be my oldest granddaughter's birthday, I'm excited for the lunch today, we will be reading from Ezekiel 31, Ezekiel 31, and some of 32. Let me do a better adjustment here. Sorry, I was just a minute late. I was putting on a wonderful picture of my father, which was requested by one of our friends to put pictures on of our dad. My dad was my favorite person in the whole world. So I hope you'll visit my site and see the great picture of my dad sitting at the piano with his dance band in college. All right, Ezekiel 31. I love the beginning of these words. Now it came to pass. And you know, we can use those words every day. We can look at something we think's never gonna have an answer, never gonna be better, and we can say, oh yes, it will come to pass. Now it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me, Ezekiel, saying, Son of man, say to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, Woo! Wait till you see. I mean, <clears throat> Pharaoh, you won't get out from under what's said here. Whom are you like in your greatness? Indeed, Syria, Assyria was a cedar in Lebanon with fine branches that shaded the forest and of high stature. And its top was among the thick boughs. The waters made it grow. Underground waters gave it height with their rivers running around the place where it was planted and sent out rivulets to all the trees of the field. Therefore, its height was exalted above all the trees of the field. The boughs were multiplied, and its branches became long because of the abundance of water as it sent them out. And all the birds of the heavens made their nests in its boughs. Under its branches, all the beasts of the field brought forth their young. And in its shadow, all great nations made their home. <clears throat> Thus, it was beautiful in greatness and in the length of its branches, because its roots reached to abundant waters. The cedars in the garden of God could not hide it. The fir trees were not like its boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like its branches. No tree in the garden of God was like it in its beauty. How about that? We're exalting that tree. Is that the tree that is figured in the story? <clears throat> I made it beautiful with a multitude of branches so that all the trees of Eden envied it. 
that were in the garden of God. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have increased in height and it set its top among the thick boughs and its heart was lifted up in its height, Therefore, I will deliver it into the hand of the mighty one of the nations, and he shall surely deal with it. I have driven it out for its wickedness, and aliens, the most terrible of the nations, have cut it down and left it. Its branches have fallen on the mountains and in all the valleys. Its boughs lie broken by all the rivers of the land and all the peoples of the earth have gone from under its shadow and left it. On its ruin will remain all the birds of the heavens and all the beasts of the field will come to its branches <clears throat> so that no trees by the waters may ever again exalt themselves for their height nor set their tops among the thick boughs, that no tree which drinks water may ever be high enough to reach up to them. For they have all been delivered to death, to the depths of the earth, among the children of men who go down to the pit. Thus says the Lord God, in the day when it went down to hell, I caused mourning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G. I covered the deep because of it. I restrained its waters and the great waters were held back. I caused Lebanon to mourn for it and all the trees of the field wilted because of it. I made the nations shake at the sound of its fall, when I cast it down to hell, together with those who descend into the pit. Woo! And all the trees of Eden, the choice and best of Lebanon, all that drink water, were comforted in the depths of the earth. They also went down to hell with it, with those slain by the sword, and those who were its strong arm, dwelt in its shadows among the nations. To which of the trees in Eden will you then be likened in glory and greatness? Yet you shall be brought down with the trees of Eden to the depths of the earth. You shall lie in the midst of the uncircumcised, with those slain by the sword. This is Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord God. And we move along to chapter 32 of Ezekiel. And it came to pass, oh, I love it. And it came to pass in the 12th year, in the 12th month, on the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation for Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say to him, you are like a young lion among the nations, and you are like a monster in the seas, bursting forth in your rivers. Boy, the Lord is still mentioning how he tried to claim that the rivers were his. <laughs> He's bringing up the rivers quite a bit troubling the waters with your feet and fouling their rivers. And oh, check out Kathy's graphic. She has a great one of a great big, huge crocodile just thrashing up the waters. Thus says the Lord God, I will therefore spread my net over you with a company of many people and they will draw you up in my net and then I will leave you on the land, I will cast you out on the open fields and cause to settle on you all the birds of the heavens. And with you, I will fill the beasts of the whole earth. <clears throat> I will lay your flesh on the mountains and fill the valleys 
with your carcass. Woo! That is sad to hear that you have just been reduced to a carcass. I will also water the land with the flow of your blood, even to the mountains, and the riverbeds will be full of you. When I put out your light, I will cover the heavens and make its stars dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. All the bright lights of the heavens I will make dark over you and bring darkness upon your land, says the Lord God. I will also trouble the hearts of many peoples when I bring your destruction among the nations into the countries which you have not known. <clears throat> yes, I will make many peoples astonished at you, and their kings shall be horribly afraid of you when I brandish my sword before them, and they shall tremble every moment, every man for his own life in the day of your fall. For thus says the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon you by the swords of the mighty warriors, all of them the most terrible of the nations. I will cause your multitude to fall. Woo! They shall plunder the pomp of Egypt and all its multitude shall be destroyed. Also, I will destroy all its animals from beside its great waters. The foot of man shall muddy them no more, nor shall the hooves of animals muddy them. And then I will make their waters clear and make their rivers run like oil, says the Lord God. When I make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country is destitute of all that once filled it. When I strike all who dwell in it, then they shall know that I am the Lord. Whew. This is the lamentation with which they shall lament her. The daughters of the nations shall lament her. They shall lament for her, for Egypt, and for all her multitude, says the Lord God. It came to pass also in the 12th year, on the 15th day of the month, that the word of the Lord came to me saying, Son of man, wail over the multitude of Egypt and cast them down to the depths of the earth. Her and the daughters of the famous nations with those who go down to the bit. Whom do you surpass in beauty? Go down. Be placed with the uncircumcised. They shall fall in the midst of those slain by the sword. She is delivered to the sword. Drawing her in all her multitudes, the strong among the mighty shall speak to him out of the midst of hell with those who help him they have gone down they lie with the uncircumcised slain by the sword Woo! you see you ought to make a little list on the back fly leaf of your bible entitle it hell and put this down as a proof scripture for people who say, oh, there isn't any hell. You're, why, your hell is here on earth. We need to be prepared to be able to just say, not our opinion, but let me, let me read to you quickly what the Lord has to say. Assyria is there and all her company with their graves all around her, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. 
Her graves are set in the recesses of the pits. And her company is all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword. Who caused terror in the land of the living? There is Elam in all her multitude, all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who have gone down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth. And so there's no question about where hell is. The Lord keeps telling us the lower parts of the earth. Who caused their terror in the land of the living? Now they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. They have set her bed in the midst of the slain with all her multitude, with her graves all around it, all of them uncircumcised slain by the sword, though their terror was caused in the land of the living. Yet they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. It was put in the midst of the slain. <clears throat> there are Meshach and Tubal and all their graves, with all their graves around it. And look up, who is Meshach and Tubal? Look it up. All of them uncircumcised, slain by the sword, though they caused their terror in the land of the living. You see, you see how it works? While they were alive on the earth, they chose how they were going to live. And now they have paid the price from God. Wow. Lesson for us. They do not lie with the mighty who are fallen of the uncircumcised, who have gone down to hell with their weapons of war. So you might be called mighty on the earth, but God says, no, you're down there in hell. They have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquities will be on their bones. How about that? Because of the terror of the mighty in the land of the living, yes, you shall be broken in the midst of the uncircumcised and lie with those slain by the sword. <clears throat> How many times does he need to repeat it, right? For us to take it in. There is Edom, her kings and all her princes, who despite their might are laid beside those slain by the sword. They shall lie with the uncircumcised and with those who go down to the pit. There are the princes of the north, all of them, and all the Sidonians who have gone down with the slain in shame at the terror which they caused by their might. They lie uncircumcised, with those slain by the sword and bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. How many times have we read that line? Go down to the pit. I don't want to go down to the pit. Do you? No, no, nope. I'm staying with Jesus. <laughs> Pharaoh will see them and be comforted over all his multitude. Pharaoh and all his army slain by the sword, says the Lord God. And so we see here, all of, his, all of his multitude, they all chose to follow him. We need to make sure we are following only the Lord Jesus Christ in his word. For I have caused my terror in the land of the living, and he shall be placed in the midst of the uncircumcised with those slain by the sword, Pharaoh and all his multitude, says the Lord. <clears throat> wow. My goodness. What a relief now to turn to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, 14. <clears throat> On this November 15th, 
and read some encouraging words of the new covenant, how wonderful it is that we live at this time and age. Hebrews 12, 14, pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled, lest there be any fornicator. Uh, I'm so sorry in America that it's fashionable to just live with one another. And look what it says here. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. For he had a place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with tears. Wow, just take that in. It says he sought it. He even had tears, but he was rejected for he found no place for repentance. Even his tears did not bring a true repentance. I mean, <clears throat> it's sad to read. And after our little pause, <clears throat> he was rejected because he For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched, burned with fire, and to blackness and, and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and the voice of words, so that those who heard it begged. <clears throat> for they could not endure what was commanded. And, and here's a quote. And it shall be stone or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I am exceeding. We claim a good, strong connection. But you have come to Mount Zion, the heavenly Yerushalayim, to an innumerable company of angels, to the gen and church of the firstborn, who are registered, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood better things than that of Abel. <clears throat> See to it you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they did not, <clears throat> much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, the phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are... Oh, this is so important. I can understand why there's interference. That the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve for our God is a consuming fire. Wow. We move right along to 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O oh servants of the Lord. Praise the name. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun unto the going down of the sun. The Lord's name is to be praised. Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Lord is high above all. His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? who dwells on high, who humbles himself to behold and in the earth. He raises the poor, raises the poor out of the dust. He lifts the needy out of the ash heap that he may seat him with children. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. Isn't that just exciting? And now we move along to... 114, Psalm 114. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob, Jacob, from a people. From a people of strange language, Judah became his sanctuary, and Israel, his dominion. Mountains skipped like rams, the little hills like lambs. What ails you, O Jordan, that you turned back? O mountains, that you skipped like rams? O little hills, like lambs? Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who the flint into a fountain of waters. Wow, glorious. We wrap up today with Proverbs 27, 18 through 20. <laughs> Let me say it quickly so you can find it. Proverbs 27, 18 through 20. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat its fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. As in water, face reflects face. Like a mirror, isn't it? So a man's heart reveals the man. Hell and destruction are never full. Woo. So the eyes of man are never satisfied. Wow. That's a serious proverb, isn't it? Praise the Lord. I pray that you enjoy the reading of today's word. <clears throat> I hope that you'll just go back over it and that you'll just tap there and go to Kathy's graphics and see all the beautiful ones that you will remember now from hearing the word. They will, it will ring a bell for you and have great meaning. Let's close in prayer. Father God, how awesome you are. How awesome. And we're here today, a brand new day, to tell you once again how much we love you. You are high and seated on a throne high above in the third heaven. And you control, you orchestrate the happenings on earth. And we can trust you. And you will not leave us ignorant. You will reveal to us the deeper meanings of what's going on. A lot of times you don't tell us the end till it comes. But you give us just enough to keep trusting Keep our faith moving forward. And Lord, we are so grateful. We are so grateful to you, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of born in Nazareth. We're so grateful that you loved us and came and you 
You suffered and died on that cross and you purchased healing and forgiveness and eternal life and, and hope and faith and you gave us a foundation in you. We are so grateful, Lord Jesus. And now you're right back there in heaven, in all the glory again, interceding for you, for you, loving you, wanting Holy Spirit to have access and permission with you to draw you unto him. Ask him today. Don't be one like we read who sought for repentance and couldn't find it because they never could get sincere again. Don't let the world beat you up with a hard heart. But Lord, we're asking you send our Holy Ghost to all those that they would seek you. They would seek you. And Holy Spirit would be able to draw them unto you that they might have a born-again experience and turn their lives over to you that you might be able to execute the perfect plan that they will no longer follow sin, which is having my own way, doing it my way. No, doing it your way will take you to the depths of hell. Do it the Lord's way. Come to him. He has a better plan. Father God, we are so grateful to pray for peace for Yerushalayim. Peace to the people. Peace for those coming today, arriving, making Aliyah, coming home to live on the land. Oh, Father God, show them the way. Help them to calm their fears and trust you. You are blossoming the most incredible country in a short amount of time. It's so awesome to watch, Lord. So awesome. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that we are grafted in to your family. Thank you for that. We, we could have not been chosen. We could have just been cast away. But you have allowed us entry into your family. You are our head now, and we are a part of your body. How glorious. How glorious. Father God, I hold up America to you. I hold up America, and Lord, we see your hand overturning and revealing sin, overturning secret things, hidden things, evil things, evil people, people who cheat and think fraud is a good plan. Well, I understand that we have some new evidence in the hardware department that has been acquired, I pray that you know what I'm referring to, that we can find out more details of what really has been going on as they head into court. And so, Father, we hold up all of these cases going to court. And we'd ask, Lord, that truth would be revealed. Truth. Let truth rule and reign. Please, Lord, we thank you that it's like you're saying, well, America suffered a long time here under a lot of ruling in Washington, D.C. that they didn't even know about. They didn't know how they were being ripped off. But, Lord, it's your right hand of judgment. We can't be the judges. You, you are in charge and we pray for them, Lord, that many would be saved. They would come out of all of that. No one's too bad not to have forgiveness if they come to you. That's how loving and wonderful you are. Patient, long-suffering, 
waiting on us to come. Please, Lord, let this be the day many rejoice because they have truly repented and asked you to come into their heart and be their Lord and Savior. And they have felt it. They have felt all those burdens, all those demonic forces leave. And joy has come to them. Joy. Hallelujah. We thank you for all this, Lord. We thank you for hearing all of the prayers, all of the concerns, all of the songs, all of the worship. Let us come before him today, worshiping and praising him. Amen. Connie says, love my jewelry. Isn't it pretty? This is all gifts from the ladies in Kenya, my family. I miss them. So I remind myself and I love on them <clears throat> through the precious gifts. Have a great day in Jesus. Bye-bye.